Hi guys, yeah, we are at Makassar today. Um, there's a couple of cop coming out and uh, we're going to try for cop. Today I have with me our two guest anglers, again Anthony and Zane and Dalen, the other ambassador. And yeah, we're going to give it a good shot here. The wind's blowing a little bit. And um, yeah, Zane's managed to get us some mullet. He's been waiting out there. Uh, he says he's going to go back for more just now. So we've got some mullet. We're going to try for cop. That's the target. Uh, there are a couple of bronzies also biting. So we'll also try for that. Hopefully this wind doesn't pick up a bit more. It is predicted to pick up a bit. But um, we're going to persist as long as we can for this session and uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to get some fish. Hi guys, so today we are at Macasa and I'm going to be droning out a Bonito, a Bonnie fillet bait for Bronzy. As you can see, the wind is absolutely pumping and it's in, we can't really throw bait now. So that's when the drone comes into its own. So hopefully I go fast. So it's just 8,000. Does the job very well. Target species for today is a cob, so there have been a couple of cob that have come out so far. It's full now, so I just want to show you the trace that I'm going to be using to try and catch a cob. I am going to be using a biting trace. The reason being, uh, there are one or two bronzies around, so just in case uh, a bronzie picks me up, I don't want to get bitten off, or at least I stand a chance of at least landing the bronzie. Uh, very important. I'm going to use two hooks, biting trace. The two hooks that I'm going to be using is a 13-0 uh, ring soy. You can also use a 11-0 ring soy. Two of them, 90 pound clear fish mate steel. The biting section is about, I'd say 45 centimeter. Figure of eight knot, 0.9 kingfisher of about another 25, 30 centimeters. Onto a number, I think it's a two swivel, power swivel. I am going to be droning because it's impossible to cast a bait out here. The sinker that I'm going to be using is an 8 ounce, kind of a long boom sinker. Short, short hooks, a sinker snoot onto one of these snap swivels. Uh, I've used cotton to just bind my uh, arms up a bit. And this is the dropper loop. This is my dropper loop. I've actually connected it to the sinker. So basically when I'm flying out, everything is going to be in line. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to attach this snap swivel to my sinker, uh, to my swivel, to the eye of the swivel. It is fixed and it is short droning. I like to use a short trace, sinker trace, so it doesn't tangle much. So that's a reason for the short sinker. And it's obviously fixed with a J hook. So as soon as you get a pickup, the cob, the bigger cob, they just swallow it. And as he runs off, he pulls against the sinker a little bit and that little bit of friction sets that hook a bit. So I find it works for me. Uh, I always encourage people to go and try it out. Uh, it may work for them or if it doesn't work for them, they can just tweak it to make it work for them. So it's good to have all the information at hand. All right, guys, what I'm doing now, got my hook. And I've just put a piece of silicone tube, similar to your aerator tubes. I've put that directly through the hook, the top hook. I don't know if you can see that. And I'll show you why, what I'm going to do now. Take a cable tie. Put the cable tie through, but you make sure it goes over the hook, which is inside that uh, uh, tube. Pull it through. This goes around the eye, into the eye of the mullet. And the hook sits proud on top of the mullet. So this doesn't allow the hook to slide too much, to fall down too much. Uh, it's actually held with the cable tie also 
holding it down. So your hookup rate is actually better. I made this a little longer because it goes onto the tail of the mullet and it also gives the mullet enough of movement. The longer it is, the better because of the more movement for the mullet. And the mullet obviously lasts longer. So basically guys, this is what you've got. This is what we've got. Proud. I just dropped it about 100 and maybe 20 meters. I don't know if you can see, it's a bit shallow and uh, it just drops off. So I've dropped it just behind the back. They seem to, the cops seem to be there. And there's a lot of mullet in this front here, so I think the mullet's actually afraid of the cob that's in the back. And they're coming into the shallows here, so hopefully my mullet's going to get a cob in the back there. This thing about out today is not going to be conducive. I know some of the guys were sliding, and but most of the guys with drones here had pulled. So, yeah, we might as well just drone a bait out there and see what happens. As you can see, I have some leftovers from the guys down there. They caught two nice cobs. So I asked him for the head for maybe a bronzy or a raggy that's swimming around. But yeah, hopefully we go on. The tackle that I'm using is my Saltist uh, 6500. It's got 40 pound J-braid on it. And this is just the, the backing, which is uh, Cobra braid. And the rod is 15 uh, foot uh, grinder elite, the heavy. Oh, it doubles up as a nice drone rod also and a good casting rod also for me I managed to get good distances with it using a 7 ounce sinker and a, and a big bait so I'm happy guys that's our guest angler Zane there trying to get us some more mullet so the mullet are close by but it's just out of range I don't know if you can see you can see them bubbling on the top of the water there in that brown water and uh, He's just trying to get close so he can have a shot. So hopefully he comes right. Yeah guys, we sorted for mullet. Zane's uh, perseverance paid off. We got a couple of good mullet there. And uh, yeah, he's all set up. He's got a nice live bait tank in his bucky, running inverters and what have you. But it seems to be working. Yeah, now we sorted for bait, we persist here, trying for a cob, and uh, now also we'll go out for bronzes also. So yeah, we, I think uh, I'm just going to put this rod in the rod stand now, head back to the bucky, and um, put out some other shark baits. So. Just learning this reggae. Yeah, in Bacassa, uh, caught the live mullet using a uh, Salters 8000 with 50 pound J-Braid and uh, Darwin Tournament 50 foot. Yeah, as I said, Reggie was caught on, uh, on a live bee that we um, were using. Young juvenile, very healthy, mouthful of teeth. These, uh, these small fish can uh, turn around and bite their own tail, so be very, uh, very safe when handling these fish. Uh, make sure all your legs are out the way when handling small Reggies. Let's get him back in the water. Thank you for the reel. You enjoyed Great it. stuff, man. Awesome reel. Awesome rod. Wow, Great awesome. stuff. Thanks, guys. Safe release. Let's get another one. We're just dropping. Just behind that last wave. I don't believe. Just, just there. So that's the spot. That's the zone. Hopefully, hopefully the big fish are patrolling just on that, left, on that back line there. We can drive on the beach here. We don't get any issues. And uh, as I said, it's a proclaimed road. In the olden days, there was a road that ran along here. So I think in that respect, we're allowed to drive on this area. So yeah. to you guys that want to or like fishing off your vehicles, come to Cape Town. Come fish the stretch of beach and you'll have a lovely time fishing.
what happened yeah you know that bite trace I had on yeah I hooked onto a shark and he bit me above the bite trace we know the bronzes are here so we're gonna start targeting bronzes now Call it a day here at Macassar. We had good fun. We managed to get some live baits. Uh, we've kept them alive in the tank, and we're gonna take it. Maybe we're gonna head back to uh, Simon Sound a little later. Maybe put in an afternoon session there and see how it goes. So yeah, stay tuned for more action. And I'm confident that uh, from what we had the other day, uh, Simon Sound is gonna produce again tonight. How's it guys? Yeah, we're all ready for our next session here at Simonstown again. We're going to fish into the night. Hopefully we get some of those bronzies, what we got yesterday. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to introduce you to the anglers, my guest anglers for today, tonight. Zane, fished this with me before. Anthony, you know him, he fished with me before. And my new buddy, uh, Anwar uh, Ibrahim, he's going to be joining us today. No. You ready, Anwar? I am ready as I'll ever be. I know you're going to catch a big bronzy tonight. I'm counting on it, right? 100%. Put a normal bonnie head out. Um, I'm actually cutting lines in it. So basically, when I tie my cotton over it, the cotton grips on these cut lines. The other thing what I like doing is tying my bait this way. I don't pull the cotton that tight. I just, just wrap the cotton right around. The cotton is actually holding the guts inside. All this just gives you that little added advantage, you know, for that big fish. Just to let it stay in the water a little longer. And yeah, prevents, stops the peckers at least from finishing your bait that quickly. You'll see I've got a J hook here and a circle hook on the top, tuna circle. Why I do this is because even if you get a smaller fish, like a smaller bronzy or something, he normally will try and mount the bait and he'll just try to grab it and stuff. He won't necessarily swallow the bait. So, there's a chance of this J-hook getting it. If it's a big fish, 99% of the time he's going to swallow the whole thing and the circle hook is going to get him in the corner. Dip it in the sand a bit. It just seals it a bit even better. So all the, the blood and the oil doesn't come out. So even when it hits the water, all these sand particles are going to come out and it's going to drift around there full of blood and oil and form some sort of a chum line which is obviously also going to attract any close by fish so yeah in addition is the long boom uh, grappling sinker uh, we are going to drone it out there it's going to be quite far out so you don't want it to slide out or come loose also i'm going to add some cotton cotton to the uh, arms here it lands in the water and you start pulling you can see this tends to dig in, that's what you want. You want the long boom tends to dig in. That's exactly what you want. If it was a short boom sinker, you would have been pulling it here and you would have just pulled it out all the time. So that's why I prefer the long boom for droning and sliding. I'm gonna use the Saltus 8000. It's got 50 pound J braid here pull up to the top actually it's got uh, uh, 65 pound gator braid backing this reel takes about it's about 450 um, to 480 meters of 50 per 65 pound gator braid and there's five 300 meters of 50 pound JDB saltest 8000 paired with the tournament the Daiwa tournament 15 foot heavy yeah I'm gonna draw a bait out and then after that when the tide's lower, I'm going to use this baby and I'm going to throw a bait out. So guys, I had a lucky throw here. Awesome, it just went out. There was a bit of a lull in the wind. So I took the opportunity, I waited out just above my knee and had a quick throw and yeah, it took off like a rocket. 
I threw a nice bonnie bait, 7 ounce sinker, uh, my saltest, grind daily 15 foot heavy, and the uh, saltest 8000 with 40 pound J braid. Yeah, it's in the zone, and I'm quite confident uh, I'm gonna get a pool here. Proper size one of these ones coming out of the False Bay Coast. Down. Uh, we're busy putting out a few baits. I'm uh, using the Saltist Heavy um, multiplier rod with the Saltist with the Saltiga HA50 with a 0.58 giant abrasion. One of a nun's uh, many setups. I'm looking forward to using it. I've used the reel before. Uh, very smooth, um, very powerful. Nice reel, nice setup to use in that. Um, I'm going to be setting out a live bait. Uh, already rigged, ready to go. Nice big uh, false bait livey. Um, yeah, we're gonna drone him out and see what uh, see what comes to eat. Okay, enough. That's good. Thank you. Right. Let's see who comes out to play tonight. Nice one. Woo! This fish is going. Yeah, thanks Zane. Zane put this bait out. Go with it. Thank you Zane. The first one to the rod gets to fight it. So sorry Zane, I beat you to it. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how quick I can land this down here. This fish is coming. I've got the, the shark in this bay on the left here, so it's safe. Put your back. <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we just managed to sort this tangle out. And yeah, the fish is right here in the white water now. Do a circle in the mouth. Hey, the other rod's running. The other rod's running. The other rod. Yeah, guys, that was epic. That was an awesome fight. On that LD60, it made light work of this little bronzy. I reckon it's about an 80 odd kilo. And yeah, awesome. I need to thank Zane for putting that bait out. <laughs> yeah, the other rod, I think the, uh, what you call them, is still on, the Saltiga, which is also a mullet that we dropped out, uh, and uh, hopefully the guy lands a fish. Anthony is busy fighting that one. So yeah, Dharma Magic, sharing is caring. I went on my grinder. I uh, will put out two mullet, uh, a mullet, a nice mullet, and uh, the rod was on in for about maybe 40 minutes. So we had a couple of other bites along the way also, the other rod, and now this one went on. There's a wreck on the left, and this thing went. Way, way, way to the left. Now I could feel it go around the rock and the, around that wreck. There's a piece of a wreck that sticks out here. And uh, there was nothing I could have done. See it's taking line. This is a Saltiga rod with a Saltiga 50k reel. And I've got the 50 pound our J braid, 200 meters stop shot, 300 meters J braid. I'm probably out by 150, there may be 150 left. And this thing is a stop.
Star Wars Soltiga 50 HKP and this is a Soltiga 14 foot uh, rod, a multiplier rod um, with a 50 pound J Bray backing and 0.60 top shot. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's quite a popular rig for me and it uh, performed exceptionally well. So impressive. Uh, second fish for the weekend on this rig. So yeah, I'm quite sharp. Yeah guys, we've come to an awesome epic uh, session, yeah, we pulled a whole night here at Simon's Town. Um, it was good, we got a couple of bronzies, I think we managed to land only two, Anwar here landed a lovely bronzy, I got a bronzy, and we had a lot of other big pulls, that cut off a couple of times, I really tried my best to land, get a fish on the grinder, but that didn't work, I kept getting cut off.